The i2 is one of the most widely used supraglottic airway devices globally. Its simplicity has earned its praise from clinicians, but don't be misled by a straightforward design. Well, it's a reliable device, there are specific features and limitations you should be aware of. Here's what I've discovered about the iGel. My name is Alex Hetner, and this is Group Call. Stay calm. Contraindications, sepsis, morbid obesity and pregnancy are explicitly mentioned in the IGEL user manual on page number 7. And why IGEL is contraindicated in these conditions? Because these conditions raise the likelihood of uh, full stomach and vomiting during airway management. But most importantly, after insertion, the IGEL forms a seal at the glottic opening. And a globding opening size can be, to some extent, estimated on the patient's ideal body weight. This generally works well, but in patients with obesity, pregnancy or sepsis, tissue swelling or engorgement can make the glottic opening size unpredictable, compromising the seal. Key takeaway, while IGEL can still be considered in these scenarios, consult your medical directors to clarify their stance. Well, note, they may not be fully aware of the manufacturer's guidance. Did you know that the IGEL can uh, also be used to assist with intubation? According to the manufacturer, in cases of unanticipated difficult intubation, an IGEL can serve as a channel for passing an endotracheal tube through its airway channel under fiber optic guidance. Important reminder, fiber optic guidance is critical for success. While there is some evidence supporting blind intubation using the IGEL, the studies I've come across were conducted on mannequins, not patients. To ensure safety and effectiveness, please always rely on validated techniques. An important feature of the IGEL is its glottic rest, which basically switching the patient's epiglottis off. But why it's important? The epiglottis plays a critical role in maintaining the patient's natural PEEP. Natural PEEP helps prevent alveolar collapse. When the agile uh, taking the epiglottis out of the equation, natural PEEP is lost. Without a ventilator or a PEEP valve on your BVM, the, the patient becomes vulnerable to complications such as barotrauma, volotrauma, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Best practice, if you're manually ventilating a patient with an agile, ensure you are using correct tidal volumes and ideally a PEEP valve to maintain adequate lung protection. For a deeper dive into proper manual ventilation techniques, check out this video. And if you want to know more about PEEP and different ventilation modes, check out this one. My name is Alex Hepner, and this was Group Call.